Let's talk soccer IQ or SIQ. During your time of play, you'll go through evaluations and personal um, reflection, and you'll come to recognize that there are different things that need to improve in your game. Sometimes you make decisions, and you're not sure why, but you know it's the right decision. Having a good soccer IQ helps you have a good reference for soccer IQ. Let's talk about the phases of play. This is pretty important. Most coaches use thirds, the first, second, and third. I like to use quarters. Um, the first part, the second part, and the third part, and the fourth part. All right, all the way back here in the fourth zone, or the fourth phase, is our defensive transition phase, where we transition the ball so that we can go into the third phase, which is midfield play. Sometimes transition occurs there. Either way, we get across the half to to get into the attacking creative phase. And then in the final phase, the first phase, is the attacking finishing phase. The point is, in each phase, you don't do certain things, while in other phase, you focus on other things. For example, don't try to be creative in the defensive zone. In soccer, there are four types of numbers. We're going to talk about two, numbers that are for us and numbers that are against us. In this example, the ball has gone out of bounds, and now there's a throw-in. If we were to throw the ball in and we use the offsides rule that is omitted, now the numbers are for us because it is us, one, versus no one, the keeper. That's for us. But in this example, the ball is now for the opponent to throw it in, and we are behind, and they are ahead. It is us, one, and them, five. Now the numbers are against us. Let's look at another example, a goal kick, where... We kick the ball, or they kick the ball. It doesn't matter where the ball lands, everyone is marked. Now, the numbers are for us because everyone is marked. It's even. All right, let's talk about the through pass. Now, let's say their defense is set up like this. Pressure, cover, and this guy over here, balance. Pressure, cover, balance. Pressure, cover, balance. Soccer 101. We have the ball here, number 7. And we have our teammate here, number 10. He's probably going to make a run going this direction. Ideally, we want to pass here, but be careful. There's hockey sticks. Regardless, let's say we pass the ball too hard. Oh, no. What do we do? Don't do that. Why? Because if the ball goes out of bounds, it's an automatic concession. Conceding the ball does not help. Instead, lay it up to this location, or better yet, closer to the flag. Now, this may invite the defense to intercept the ball, and that's okay. We'd rather have that than to concede the ball. Now, here's why. Number 10 will now play defense, give him pressure. Now, under pressure, the defender has to make decisions here, there, anywhere. And we have help. We have our pressure cover balance on their half. Now, if num the defense messes up because number 10 is there, now it's number 10 versus the keeper, and we have a chance to score. So... It's better to have the ball intercepted than conceded because there's always a chance. With through balls, give us the light mustard, please. All right, switching the field. Different ways to do that. Say the ball is over here with this player, number four. We want to switch the ball to the other side of the field, changing the point of attack. We have number three, number two, and our winger over here. This is our sub-objective. Get the ball here. How do we do that? We can do it in a couple ways. Here's the first. Okay, so we've recognized that we cannot go forward because this guy is here. They have defense too. Look, look at their formation. It's standard. Pressure, cover, cover, and then balance. Pressure, cover, balance. So change point of attack. Here's the first way to get to this location. Our five, our winger. We drop to our three, go to two, and then to five. C shape. Another way we can do this is... The W, the W shape, where we drop to the three, but now we use our CDM, our number six. We use the W shape. He's playing the face. The third way we can do this is to skip number three, go directly to number two, and then the five. Now, after every pass, people have to move to create new angles for passing. The last way we can do this is do the long ball all the way across the pitch. But remember, everyone's got to move at least three steps after a pass. New angles. But do not do this pass right here. No, no, no. Why? Hockey sticks. 
We don't want that. Instead, pass to the space that you want him to be. Both players need to see hockey sticks and see the space. From here, you play to face, you communicate to turn, you communicate options, and play on. What would happen if I got the ball in this situation? What if? This is a question you should always be thinking when you do not have the ball. This is a situation that actually happened in our match. Jeremiah dribbled the ball to the wing. Matt was there to support him. We had a cam here and another cam here. And our CDM was here. And our winger was here. Now, Jeremiah needs to advance the space and he's got a defender following him and he's looking to do something, but he's covered by lots of defenders. The numbers are not in his favor. But what do we see? What if? What if the ball got through and landed here? Oh no. Now what? The problem was two players did not see this. They didn't ask this question. They didn't move to this space. Because the ball did get through and it was a scoring opportunity with a wide open backside net. So, what if? Let's look at another scenario that actually happened in our match. Michael dribbled the ball on the left side of the wing. He was ready to cross. Jeremiah was there and he was ready. And around him was a defender, a defender, defender. Now, I was on the far end of the field and I could see a big gap, a big open spot. I can see that the ball was getting ready to cross to this location and I was ready for it. I could also see that there was a big amount of space right here. So I moved into this spot. Didn't need to be, but I thought, what if? What if the ball got through and it did get through? I only had time for a one second strike. I missed the top bar by two feet, but I thought, what if? And that was an opportunity to score. I challenge you to think, what if? Waves. Let's talk about waves. Waves of attack. Let's say the ball is here with number nine and he's looking to cross the ball. Number 10 and number 11, they are ready. They are ready for the pass. They are ready for the one two strike on net. Now, look, there's another level of wide open space. Here is the second wave of athletes. They've moved in. Our first wave, 10 and 11. Our second wave is five, seven, and eight. And then we could, if we wanted, have a third wave. This could be our defender, our CDM, so forth. Regardless, when the ball gets through, we're not missing the whole clump of people. If we miss number 11, 7 is there. If number 11 sees that 7 has a better opportunity, then he lets it through. Perhaps the ball didn't strike the way we wanted it to go. So number 10, number 5, we have waves of options. Here's what you don't want. Number nine has the ball and everyone is in the same spot and boom, this is a problem. Why? Look at the numbers. It is now in their favor. It is one, two, three, four, five against our one, two, three. Oh, wait, now they have six and seven. So it is bad if we miss waves. So we see these numbers here, it's too clumpy. Blocking the lane of the dribbler. This is... A very common thing that happens in soccer. Say a defender here, and we want to advance the ball forward. Number 10 and 11 are looking for the option, but he moves to this base. No, don't do that. Here's why. Because when you do that, you bring your defender. It is now no longer one on two. It is now one on three, plus you're on the way. Instead, you need to check away. Check to a space that is not occupied. Half of the job of every teammate is to create space for your teammates and for yourself, not just for you. Let's see another scenario. Number five here on the left wing. He wants to advance the ball forward. Their defense is asleep for whatever reason, giving us all this space. So we're going to dribble forward. And if they're going to keep letting us dribble forward, great. We move to space, drawing the defensive way instead of drawing them in. And if we're going to be allowed to keep going in, Fine, I'm going to take that shooting lane and score. Why? Because that's the primary objective. We can't have that primary objective if everyone's in the way. Look here. If these guys move into this space, and he moves into this space, and this defender follows him, and that defender follows him, and this guy comes in the same space, and his defender follows him, we have all these people in the shooting lane. So, 
Find the space. Get to it. Playing defense as the striker. Here's our halfway line. And the defender who has the ball is somewhere right about here. And our striker is here. Now, do not just rush in full blown. No, no, no. Don't do that. Why? Because a defender that is facing is just going to pass to the side or dribble right around you. And then once he passes, most of the time, the striker just follows the ball and then they move where they want to move. Instead, come from an angle. And I like to call this taking away the return. Force the ball one direction and then follow that direction, taking away the return pass. This does something very, very unique. It turns our 11 v 11 game into a 10 v 10 game. And anytime we can take the numbers to a smaller, small sided game, that's better. Say he wants to go to the, the sideline, that's okay because we are defending it. And even if he wants to go way down the sidelines, we still have hockey sticks. And our defensive back is our safeguard. Force the ball to the middle. Because if they're playing away to face, they have to give the ball back rather than turning into our midfielders. So push to one side, then force to the middle. 